So welcome everybody. Today we have um, Latevi Lawson from the African Institute of Mathematical Science in Ghana. Yeah, there's a sister organization um, also in South Africa, I know. Um, but uh, maybe Latevi can say more about it. And uh, he will talk about minimal and maximal length from non-emission position dependent on commutativity. So when you're ready, Latevi, just go ahead. Okay, thank you for thank you, Andreas, for this invitation. Okay, my talk will be minimal and the maximum length from non emission position dependent on communicativity. Okay, this work uh, I did it when last year or oh, two months ago when I was uh, a tutor and a postdoctoral at AIMS. Uh, AIMS is a uh, African Institute, uh, African Institute for Mathematical Science which is uh, one of uh, the best institutes in Africa where we gather all the best students in Africa. We give them 10 of training in mathematical science, science and, and so they can continue with the postgraduate study. So we have this institute in uh, six country in, uh, in Africa. Uh, so, uh, I am current, I was uh, a, the one for AIMS Ghana. So uh, to introduce myself, I'm Togolese from nationality and uh, 2018, I defined my, te my thesis in theoretical physics at the uh, Institute of Mathematical Science in Benin. I was supervised by the professor, uh, professor Gabriel Abosobi from Benin and collaborate with a law group from ICTP. Uh, in 2019-20, I was lecturer at uh, assistant lecturer in, uh, in my country, Lomé University. And from October 2010 and 2000, July, last July, I was tutor and postdoctoral where I did this work I'm going to present. So currently, I'm technical jobless and I'm looking for a new position to continue this work. So any position uh, is welcome for me to apply. Thank you. So, you know, uh, gravity, according to Newton, is an uh, attractive force. He said that when we have two objects that have different mass, both objects attract themselves and create what we call gravity. But for Einstein, okay, but, but for Einstein, gravity is not attractive force, it's a deformation of the space. So like you can look at the picture here, you see that uh, there is a big object that create that curve the space and the light object uh, fall down, attract the, the big object attract the, the light object. So it's what we call by gravity according to Einstein. So what is the property and characteristic of the gravity according to Einstein? So gravity is created, becomes stronger for heavy objects. Heavy objects curve the space and the surrounding light objects fall down for low energy. And uh, the time inside of uh, this whole run out slowly in such a way is what we call the dilatation of uh, the time. Another property is of gravity is a uh, uh, strong gravitational force, strong gravitational induced contraction of the length. This is also predicted by the gravity according to Einstein. So, we also, they also predicted the existence of the black hole where the information in the, at the inside of the black hole is projected, virtually projected at the event horizon. So it's, it's what we call by a gravitational holography. So here, like you can look at this, so the picture here, you have a, the gravitational, how the virtual image here. And uh, the source, the real image is from somewhere here. Uh, at this, the solution that we have So, 
this is some of the properties of the reality according to Einstein. So my first question by studying this subject is, can you recover this object, this, sub, uh, this characteristic in, um, in a quantum mechanics? So because for me, if the classical mechanics is out of the quantum mechanics, this property can happen. So this is my first question. I put it aside and I continue. So another subject that interests people today is the unification of the four fundamental forces that govern our universe. We have uh, these four forces are can be grouped into category of uh, theory, which is uh, which are the quantum mechanics and the general relativity. So unify this purpose today means that to unify general relativity to quantum mechanics, which will give birth to what we call by quantum gravity. So there is some many subjects, there is some many candidate theory that try to unify both theory. Like uh, we have low quantum gravity, string theory, Job special relativity and so on and so on. So the common point of all this story is that all this story predict the existence of the minimal measure realm. So in the paper of Ken Akin Ken and his collaborator, he proposed this algebra in the form the Heisenberg algebra by the this parameter car beta, and they call it the gravity correction to quantum mechanics and they compute the certainty principle and they get what we call the minimal length which is proportional to the Planck length. So all these candidates of the quantum gravity predict this length scale. So like you can look at this on the figure here, you can realize that uh, uh, this minimal length is a deformation of the space and they create what we call the singularity here. So, taking account of the discipline manner in quantum mechanics, there have many consequences uh, that this manner can induce. You have the singularity of the, the space representation, uh, the, you have the loss of the self adjoinders and the elasticity of the operator, and this minimal length create also the fuzziness of the space and induce no commutativity of the space. You have also violation of the Lorentz symmetry and many, many properties that seem uh, on the experimental aspect. Probing this length today with uh, nowadays technology is very difficult because you need this energy this energy to probe this minimal length scale, which is today the non uh, experimental possibility. So, like Feynman said, that whatever your theory is beautiful, if it's not proved by the experimentation, it's wrong. So, once we cannot get this energy, so the minimal length scale is difficult to prove. So, this led me to my second question is. Is it possible to probe quantum gravitational effect with a low energy? Because quantum gravity exists. But the problem is uh, the extremely high energy that we need to look at. It. So the question is can you prove this quantum gravity effect with a low energy? So this is the second question. So, uh, in 2017, uh, these scientists proposed uh, something. They proposed that we can have a uh, minimal length. At the end of the paper, if you read it, it's proposed that we can have minimal length and uh, maximum length at uh, the Planck scale. So, uh, 2010, after my PhD degrees, and uh, uh, because I focus on the paper of Andreas and the law and the English is the paper that I studied during my PhD degrees. The proposed uh, position the problem of commutativity. In their paper, they say that any object in there, in this space, will look like a string, will look like a string. So, focus in their algebra, I propose answer to the previous paper where I find that 
I said that we can have also an addition of a minimal length to have the maximum length. The maximum length, what is the background? What is this maximum length bring in this theory? So in the talk, this talk, I will propose another alternative way to get this minimum, this minimum here from the non city And uh, I will show that the minimal length here, we have some similarity with the classical properties of the cavity. And for my third question, for my third uh, uh, point, I will show that the minimal length of certainty that we have have some connection with uh, the non-emission quantum mechanics scenario that we know. And the maximum length also, the presence of the maximum length will allow me to prove quantum gravitational effect uh, with low energy with the question that I have asked myself. That if the presence of the maximum length can prove quantum gravitational effects with low energy. So if, <coughs> if this theory also, I will find a way that combined minimal length and maximum length is a way to simplify quantum gravitational effect and the uh, uh, magnetic effect. And the, at the end of, I will show that uh, the Planck scale, taking a cup both length together, the Planck scale can look like uh, a lattice space, can look like a, a discrete space. So that is the point that I will look at um, during this talk. So my my presentation will outline like this. I will introduce what I mean by non emissivity non commutativity and then I will take a particular case of that, which is the non emission position dependent on commutativity. In the end, I will make, I will do an application of that, taking particle, three particle involved in this case, and uh, present the reference. Okay. Here we have, I consider here uh, a thin dimensional event space, and the A here is a uh, Heisenberg algebra of the emission operator. That is given by this, uh, uh, this equation that we know. We have here on the position, commutator is known, and the momentum operator uh, commutation also is known. If we have the, this algebra, I can copy the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So, because there is a no commutative here, uh, the uncertainty here is a different, is greater than H, half of the H. So now, from this previous operator, I deform the operator by the, the by the parameter theta, uh, which is uh, anti-symmetric tensor, and uh, by eta. So I realized that this deformation still conserves the emissivity of the both operator, and at the end of the day, the Hamiltonian function for which we take account both operator is also emission. Now, if I compute the commutation of, uh, I take both operator, I form what we call theta, eta, no commutative algebra, which is well known in the literature. So from that now, I get a new additional incertainty principle because here is no commutative, I have now a certain measurement here in this point also. The third point is uh, I want to define what I mean by non-emission, non commutativity So I consider another operator, capital S and uh, capital P here. And uh, this capital S and P are deformed by the uh, parameter alpha. In such a way that if I take the limit alpha to zero, I recover the previous uh, operator. Now, uh, I define this operator. Once I have this definition, I can write the capital operator and the P operator in, in terms of the previous one like this. And I can realize that this operator, the way I write here, 
become non-emission because the operator here, the, the adjunct is going to the operator. So taking this both operator, I can form what we call by non-emission non commutativity because the algebra that I get here is a non-emission operator. So this is the general definition of that. So since, like I mentioned that both operators are non-emission, so the resulting Hamiltonian will also be non-emission. So consequently, so we have the spectrum of the Hamiltonian will be, will be complex. We will have non-emissionality of the operator, and then we have no the, uh, uh, we have no notability of the basis. The question is, how can we recover the density of this operator in order to recover the properties of the quantum mechanics? Because uh, to do the quantum mechanics, we just need at least the emissivity. If the emissivity is, is guaranteed, we can start by the quantum mechanics. So, but my recipient is that I lost all, all those information. So it's impossible to, to do control mechanics. So therefore, I define by this operator over here, which is defined by this is uh, element of this algebra, which is non-emission operator. It's well known in the literature that you can associate with this operator, a blue orthogonal eigenvector, by orthogonal eigenvector, in such a way that this operator, we have the again uh, again problem like that. So now to recover the emissivity to connect this operator to again, we introduce an automorphism like uh, I link that uh, I introduce in the paper. So by this relation, we can connect this operator to the again in such a way that spectrum becomes real. Now taking account of this new operator and uh, the, the inner product also will change even by this expression. So it's uh, something is you know, is well known in the literature. And uh, from that, we can define, we can factorize this uh, operator like a product of the Dyson map. And uh, to get the Dyson map, we take just the power of the half of the, the, the sum of the GC, uh, and the zero linear operator. And using this operator, then <laughs> make it what we call the, the, uh, the similarity transformation. We can connect non emission operator to emission operator, which is uh, which is uh, emission. So, and uh, also we can connect the agent vector of the emission uh, operator to the to uh, a, a, a non emission by this emission, something that is well known in the literature. So that is the tool that I will use to for my special key. That is the general definition of what we know in the literature. So we come to the point now. In 2010, based on the Andreas and the law in the previous paper, I propose something like that. So uh, I propose this non emission uh, commutativity. Uh, I, 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 I suppose that uh, uh, this is strongly determined by this parameter. So my previous alpha here is will become tau, which will represent uh, the gravity parameter, gravity, gravitational effect at this scale. And uh, the theta here is the non commutative parameter because according to the string theory, predict that at the Planck scale, the space will be not commutative. So, uh, also we know that also this parameter non commutativity is the inverse of the magnetic field. The question is, if this algebra that I propose describe the Planck scale, it means that we are at the short distance. So, the magnetic field here will be very strong because all these parameters are very small. So this is the algebra. So what is the, uh, uh, the mean pool of this algebra? Now, 
If I take the tau, which is the gravitational parameter here, to zero, I recover the well node no commutative, uh, uh, theta deformant no commutative in two dimensions. And now, the previous I mean, to, uh, operator can be written in two multiple directions. The first one by this relation that I have. I can realize that the operator S yes is deformed by uh, the parameter tau, and uh, B also is deformed. Uh, this one is uh, is invariant. So we should that we see that there is information that is high in all these uh, deformations. Now, if I compute the normal, I realize that this uh, uh, deformant operator and become non initial and therefore the P also become non initial So what is the essence of this one? It means that. There is something that is high, which is which is the cause of the non-amicity of this operator. And this, if you have in the in the theory of the gravity, because in all the theory of the gravity will be something that by the plus scale, the operator will lose the, the amicity. And this can be interpreted like uh, uh, the fuzziness of the space in this direction. Because we cannot precise, we cannot get in precise way. The, uh, we cannot measure in precise way gravity in, in this direction. Now, if we take Hamiltonian, or for taking account Hamiltonian of this operator, Hamiltonian also will not turn the emission. So we have to solve this problem. Now, uh, as an example, we can take uh, the frame Hamiltonian. And uh, we compute in this case if we compute the the Hamiltonian uh, and target, we can realize that uh, there is uh, an additional term that is added to this one, make the difference between them that you have the normal CTG. For the harmonic oscillator, we can have the same thing if we make the same computation as well. We can have that there is an uh, additional term here which make the difference between. The, the uh, 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 this Hamiltonian and the agent. So, at the end of the, at the end of the day, we can realize that in, uh, for every system that we can have, the Hamiltonian will be will, will, will non emission uh, taking account of uh, both operators. So, now, like I, I, I proposed in the subject in the previous sub uh, subsection. Uh, I propose this diagram map, which is uh, I just copy what yes, uh, we collaborated with, and uh, propose also this uh, associate operator. With this operator, I will try to recover the emissivity uh, to, guarantee, to guarantee the reality of the spectrum and the emissivity of the operator. So now the next point is to compute the the minimal effectivity measurement. So once we have no commutative algebra, the first point is to compute the effectivity principle. Because we have generalized this algebra, we call this one a generalized effectivity principle like an active frame, uh, a can have the paper of 1994. So now the problem is so we have to for each set of the algebra, we have different interpretation. I take the non commutative part here. I compute the executive principle, and at the end of the day, I get uh, the minimal length and the maximal length. So, the minimal length here, I have uh, theta and uh, the tau here. You know that the theta is the inverse of the, uh, the, the magnetic. So, I have tau over b, which is the magnetic field here. And the maximum length, which is the latent here, is the inverse of the, the tau here. So if I cope, I cope this both length, the minimum and the maximum length, I realize that we get the inverse of the beta. Now, I generate that here. I'm um, two dimension. I generate this one to the n dimension. I realize that I have alternation of the minimal length and the maximal length, and so on and so on. Like this, I get here. 
Now, what is the interpretation of this one? If I cook both of them, I will realize that here I have the minimal length. I have the maximum length which separate both of them. So if I take all of them, I can realize that uh, this scale look like uh, a discretization of the space where the minimal length is uh, spacing by the maximum length. Now, at each point here, I have uh, a coupling of the gravitational field and the magnetic field here. So the question that we can ask is, what is the origin of the magnetic field here? So I try to look this problem like the Lando problem where uh, a particle moving on the plane and uh, we suggest this particle to the magnetic field. So based on this model, which is well known in the literature, I'm saying that the magnetic, because here we are at flat scale, the magnetic field here, we come from more, uh, from another universe, which I call the, which induce what uh, 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 the bounds of the universe, which make the uh, the uh, break of the singularity at each point. So it's a conjecture. It's not. It's not something that I can prove. It's my it's the way I look at the problem. And this bounce of this uh, 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 coming out of the magnet from the multiverse create what we call the bounds of the universe at each singularity point. So now, if I take the second part of this algebra, I repeat the same work. I get the minimal, the maximum length and the minimal momentum. So what is the meaningful of this part of this one? Like I said, we can compete from both operator the uncertainty energy and the uncertainty time. I realized that from this equation, the maximum length we know that is strong is large. If the maximum length is strong and large, so the energy is low here. And the time here very large, what I call by the geometrician, which is similar to what the question that I have asked to myself, like uh, we have the uh, 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 classical property, you know that uh, 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 strong gravitational force and use create uh, a whole making attraction of the light object. And the time instead of uh, this whole become like run out slowly, what we call the geometrician. It's something that I try to think. Now, uh, I will look to this is. Uh, Another part of the now using the Sangon map, which is a Dyson map, by similar transformation, I realized that the operator that was not that were not uh, emission now using the similarity transformation become emission. And uh, so, what does this mean? Because we know that emissivity, non-emissivity, create the fuzziness of the space. So, uh, using the similarity. The similarity, in fact, just remove this fuzziness. We make non-emission operator to emission is what uh, we interpret by the removal of the fuzziness of this thing. And um, we can compute, like uh, before, some example for for free particle here. I can get that uh, if I use the similarity transformation, I can get that uh, at the end of the day. The particle here are emission. So for the harmonic oscillator also, I can get that repeating the same computation using this similarity transformation, I can realize that uh, this operator are now emission. Now uh, using the emission operator and I compute the same uh, algebra, I find that I recover uh, the previous algebra, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the similarity transformation here, in fact, doesn't keep invariant the algebra, but just remove the fastness induced by the minimal effect. So I recover this algebra 
the argument doesn't change. So, uh, like, uh, if I want to schematize this one, because this one here, I have the assignment here by the main mission operator. Here is the mission operator. And because I have two of them with the main mission, I define this to be the main mission operator space. And now, using the similarity transformation, the fact that the similarity transformation removes just the anonymity of this operator and then going to be an issue. Or I call here that uh, the fuzziness, the fuzziness is uh, also removed. I get what we call by uh, a name by a hiding emission locality. The hiding name emission is also known in the literature. So I just call this one by hiding emission locality because uh, the fuzziness is removed. I have all the operator that is the emission. So I compute again the uncertainty measurement. I realize that the uncertainty measurement needs to give uh, education on the, the gravity property that this scale also is invariant. Nothing is changed. But the only difference is the uh, business that. So what? I can look this one. It's like uh, I have two space. This space is like uh, I have a hiding space here. It is a bit projected here that I call a uh, 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 mission space. So by the synergy transformation, so I have here the the minimal length here, the minimal length, the minimal length. And uh, at, at, like I mentioned before, at each minimal length, there is a bounce of the, the bounce of the universe, which is created by the magnetic state. So, uh, to represent what I try to say is something that I like. Uh, uh, I, I try to figure out here. So, now I will do some application. So that is the tool that I present. Now uh, I would like to compute a particle now, a pre particle in this hidden emission space and look what happened. So like the, the hidden emission operator is given by this one. Uh, I already compute. Now uh, compute if I have the operator, I can uh, Compute uh, the cylinder equation. So I am in two dimensions here. So I can decode the operator, uh, the wave function, uh, uh, according to air direction and the y direction. And the eigen function also is addition of uh, uh, eigen function in this direction and y direction. So now uh, I try to compute uh, according to. In each direction, in each direction, the uh, the difference equation is well known here, and the eigen value here is also computed. So I get in the eigen function also is all known in the literature. It means that in the each direction, the part the, the motion of the particle is not free, it's free. So now I want to compare. I take this one at weakness, and then compare to what happened in the Y direction because at the Y direction the particle is influenced by the uh, gravitational parameters. So the equation is transformed that I have to solve here is transformed on this way where uh, I, I, I introduce uh, m of y that we call the position dependent mass. So my previous problem now is transformed to another problem of. Uh, a semiconductor field, uh, we name uh, m of y like uh, po uh, position effective mass. Uh, this model here is used to uh, to in semiconductor to to measure uh, uh, the structure of the particle in condensate matter. 
So the model that is proposed as a proposition of the math is here. In my case, I have the parameter tau, which is uh, the gravity, gravity quantum gravity parameter. So in this position dependent mass is influenced by the tau. It means that at each position, the mass of the particle change. So this changement is due, is due to the parameter tau, uh, uh, tau here, which I mean by quantum gravity parameter. Now, I try to plot this length. I realize that when I increase the this length, the, the tau, when I increase the tau, the position dependent mass also increase. What this mean? It's like uh, the the parameter tau increase the mass of the of the uh, uh, the mass of the uh, 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 of this particle, the mass of the particle increase with uh, the tau. Now, this let me something to let let me to imagine something. I'm saying that if the gravity parameter induces the increase of the mass, so we can something in laboratory. Uh, uh, we can propose something like that. That suppose that you have this one is the mass of the. Uh, is the the mass of the the particle at the position one here? Yeah. Now, using taking account of the quantum gravity here, as I suggest, the mass will increase. I will have the, another position here, which is which is PDM two. And it's such a way that if I make the difference between both length, I can have something that better. The gravity parameter. It's a proposition that because based on these things. So we know that also in the accelerator particle that if we make collision of the particle and we have the increase of the mass according to the Einstein formula. So look at these things. I propose something like that. Make the difference of the position of this. Uh, position the pattern mass can reveal me something about the gravitational effect. It's just a proposition, it's a theory. So now come to the agent function. When I complete the agent function, I realize that uh, I can express the agent function in terms of the agent function of this direction. I realize that the agent function is for tau less than the potential here, which means that the energy decrease when I increase the end. So I try to plot. Now I make here now uh, I have the agent function. I complete the agent function, I get this formula, and I compute the non-commutativity uh, of this one. And I plot the this part, this formula the non orthogonality I get I realize that at this point there is a fluctuation of um, the wave function at this scale. This flash since we are at the plant scale here, this quantum fluctuation will be only the quantum gravitational fluctuation. It means that we are in the transition uh, six space here. So this is the what we get from the wave function. Now, I try to combine uh, the eigen function from both directions at this direction in the, oh, sorry, it should be uh, Y here. So if I combine both of the, uh, the energy, I get a general formula like that. And I plot the total in the eigen value. And what we can realize is what, according to this, graph, I realized that by increasing the quantum level, uh, because of the gravity parameters, the, the, the energy level is curved, is deformed, and this deformation is pronounced more and increase the quantum level. Enable the particle to jump 
from one state to another one for low energy. So I try to mean that here, the particle moves from one state to another is low energy. The particle doesn't need too much energy to make this transition. Is what you can look at from this second figure here. You can realize that when I choose the parameter time, the, the amplitude of the energy decreases before the parameter is an increase of the parameter time. Now, this is uh, what I get as the first result. I plot the wave function, I combine both of them. Like I mentioned before, in the east direction, the particle, the motion of the particle is, uh, is free. In the y direction, the particle is, uh, is strongly perturbated by the parameter tau. Now, I put both of them. I have something. Here in the first plot here, I take the parameter tau to be zero in the other fundamental state, and it plot one. The, the, the plot in blue here is the, the wave function in uh, S direction, and orange here is the wave function is uh, in uh, Y direction. Here at the first plot, I have a synchronization of both of them because the tau is uh, approximately to zero. Now, I try to increase the, the value of tau at uh, lower state, I realized that uh, the wavelength starting contract from the first one. Uh, this contraction is more pronounced when I increase the value of uh, the tau. So I go to the second level, I can realize that uh, the wavelength in, in general are contracted. But when I increase the gravity parameter here, I still realize that the wavelength is constructing a continuum in respect to the first one. And we can increase also the number of level. Uh, I still realize the, the same property. So this property can be look like um, there is a, the contraction of length like we know in the in the classical uh, in the classical Pascal wedge. So the fact that in y direction the length, the wavelength is contracting in the e world makes that means that okay, the parameter tau here is the cause of this one because uh, in s direction everything is removed is, is invariant here. So this figure shows me that there is something that protect the contraction of the length and like your association. Now I try to combine compute uh, the density, the density compatibility of for both solutions. What I realize is what I realize that at the first state for for a phase value of the tau for n equal to one, the probability to find the particle are practically everywhere. So the particle is densely, is, is, is the presence of the particles is very strong at the lower level. And if I increase the number of the quantum level, this particle, this density particle, uh, probability density increase when I increase the number of the particle. And this strongly increase when I go to n equal to n to 15, n to 15. It means that uh, this property is reduce uh, 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 a density of the, uh, the density of the particle is very increased. It can account the maximum, which is the which is that I get. So, to summarize this uh, idea is, uh, I said that the mass power length tau here include the position dependent of the mass, induce 
photo gravitational fluctuation, induce compression of the wavelength, and they curve the energy level of the particle and allowing the particle to jump from one state to another one with a low energy and um, with a high density probability. To summarize what I did is what we can return like uh, the property from by the introduction of the mathematics, which for me is similar to the Pascal property of the gravity as it is case. Now, uh, as a, this one is, I really want to not to talk about this one, but uh, it's just an imagination. Uh, I'm thinking that what I propose here can have some relation with other field of, uh, of science like uh, quantum biology. Uh, like you know, <laughs> one of the biggest problems today in quantum biology is to understand enzyme catalysis. You know that the answer, the way enzyme acts on the substrate is what? When you have here, for example, uh, without enzyme, the energy of activation of particle of the substrate is very high. And when we apply the enzyme, the, the energy of activation is decreased. It's like uh, the enzyme shot the way of the of the, um, the chemical relations here. So, it's something that uh, people try to understand in quantum biology. So, uh, having done my project and having a look at this one, I've seen that we can have some similarity between both of the subjects. I don't know, it's just a proposition. Uh, it's just theoretical aspects. And also the second point that uh, we know is also the photosynthesis. What also is uh, something that people want to understand. How the plants attack uh, the sound of the night, uh, the, the, uh, the, the light and convert it to starch and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the sugar. And like, you know, this process, this mechanism did at 90 percent. It means that the nature take convert by take a, a, use a easier way to convert the, uh, uh, the solar energy to a product at 90 percent. But people want to base on this one to to try to convert uh, the solar energy to electricity with uh, uh, photovoltaic panel and also one. But today, the conversion of the energy today is uh, something of 90%. So it's like uh, something that needs our understanding of uh, this convention, which the nature did very well. So I don't know, but having did my work, and suppose that there is something that needs in this case. So it's a proposition. So I'm trying to look deeper in this way to find what will happen. It's just a proposition. So, uh, so I think that at the end of my talk, so this is the reference that we check. Thank you. Thank you very much, Latevi. Any comments, questions? Philip. Yes. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for a, a talk on something I not really thought much about. I didn't realize there was so much going on. Can you go back to the very beginning? I had a very general question. When you first, uh, that's it, the, the, where you gave the commutator of x hat with y hat, had it a moment ago. Okay. 
I think it was earlier. It was earlier. We, we had the you had it involved the uncertainty principle. Yeah. Yeah. That, that there there it is. Now now. Um, you had okay. Looking at the delta x delta p is one plus beta delta x squared. Oh, sorry, sorry. It should be delta p. Sorry, delta p. It should be delta p here. It's a mistake. Oh, so, it's, so a, it's, it? a, it's a p here. It's not s. It's a p. It's a. Oh, p. Uh, okay. I see. All right. Yes, it's a p. Um, it's a p. but it means that. The top line, the xp equals ih bar i plus beta p hat square, that's an operator identity. And the second line is in whatever state you calculate those matrix elements. Is that correct? Yes. So it's true for, it, it basically is true for every state. Uh, is, can you come again with your question? With the, the, the delta x delta p greater or equal to h bar yeah. over two is, is true for every state in the Hilbert space. Okay, so no, 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 it's not. We have many kind of uh, here. Well, no, with, the, with the delta p squared. Once, once I change, uh, 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 modify here, I can get a new things. So this one is the original one we know from things. So is the the classical one I can say uh, for you. So once. You have many versions of uh, this deformation, and you get a new deformation. I don't know if I answered the question. Well, that that would seem to suggest that delta x is is universal. It's universal. If if delta x is h bar root beta, yes, that yes. suggests that delta x is the same for every state. Okay. And yes. Yeah. Okay. Here yeah, I'm in quantum mechanics. And uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that's the smallest value that delta X is allowed to have for any state. Yes, this is the outcome of an optimization problem. Ah, uh, okay. So this is actually a, a longish calculation. Yeah, and it becomes longer when the commutation relations are getting more involved, but you have to use the delta and you have to delta squared is, uh, is just a variance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to replace it and you have to replace the p squared on top yeah. and sandwich it between states and then you optimize it and then the red line is the outcome of that long calculation that's the minimal value you can have i see now the other thing i think you that's very nice now the other side is is there a maximum value to delta x yes the maximum value Yes, is there a maximum value to delta x? Because otherwise, if delta x becomes very, very large, you, you basically lose quantum mechanics. Yes, yes. yes. Is what we say is, is what we mentioned. Please. Yeah, but what, I, I understand that. But why should the, I, I just missed why should there be a maximum length? Yes, uh, okay, yes. If, like uh, Andrea said, we repeat the same computations and uh, uh, we we get some this both so, I see. Okay. I, I developed this method uh, is in the, the attached paper of. Uh, Okay, so, so no, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not questioning whether you're correct. It just seems to be that you're starting out with an inequality. Delta X, delta Y is greater than something. Yes, and like that, that leads you to both the minimum and the maximum. Yes, but it's it so obvious that you yeah. could let delta X go to infinity and satisfy the inequality. Yes. Uh, in fact, we optimize these equations, this optimization of these equations. No, you balance, you balance the left and the right. Yeah, so in, so in the simple case, you have, let's say, delta x, delta p, and on the other side, you have a delta p squared. Let's forget that it's p squared. Mm -hmm. Now, what you normally do in the uncertainty relation, you want to make delta x very small, 
at the cost of making delta p very large. Yes. And you can make delta p as large as you like. But now having a p squared on the right hand side, you can't do this because the right hand side grows faster than the left hand side. And that's the reason why you get the minimal length. Because yeah. the right hand side competes now with the left hand side. You can't make delta x zero because of the right hand side. Yeah, I, that, 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 I, that I understand. But why, and and the why? max and the, the novelty here is what Latavi suggests is that there's also a maximal length. Well, I don't see it from this relation. That that was all I was concerned okay. about. Okay. Hmm. I'm, I'm not I'm not disputing that there's a maximal length. I just don't see it following from from a, from an inequality which goes one way. You, it seems you'd need to bound delta x delta y itself. It has to be less than or equal to some other object. If if it had to lie in a range, then I would say yes, there, there, there could naturally be a maximum and a minimum. Tevi, you want to answer this or? Okay, I, I, I'll try to guess the question, but uh, oh, I don't really understand it. <laughs> I think what he's saying is, what he's saying is, once you have a delta minimum, yeah, yes. then the other quantity, whatever it is P, and in this case is Y, has yes. at the equality is maximal. Yes, sure. That's how, how large you can make it. I think that's the interpretation. Okay. okay. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. All right. I I have a question on on the or comment more on on page twenty six. Um, in a way, you answered that already. Um, twenty six. Okay. Yeah, twenty twenty six. Um. I didn't want to interrupt, but somehow, yeah, here, yeah. So somehow it depends. So you're, it's only non-hermeticity, yeah. So when you have a non-hermitian representation of your capital X and capital P, you can put it in uh, an Hermitian Hamiltonian, even the harmonic oscillator, and it becomes non-hermitian, yeah. But there are, Hermitian representations for these algebras as well. And sometimes they are not obvious at all. Like the simple Kempf algebra, yeah? mm -hmm. xp is one plus p squared, has a standard non-Hermitian representation, yeah? um, but it also has an Hermitian representation if you take x to be x sure, and, sure. and p to be tangent P with some constants uh, in, in there as well, mm. then you have a perfectly well-defined Hermitian representation. And then it doesn't, your, hem, uh, your Hamiltonian doesn't become non-Hermitian. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so it's, it's not intrinsic, but it's kind of covered later on where you have the hidden uh, non-Hermeticity. You construct some Hermitian representations in some way, but there are more, that's what I'm saying. Uh, mm. Even for the simple Kempf algebra, we wrote a paper, there are four different types of representations. And one of them is submission actually. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Any more comments? Just as a suggestion, there has been work by Weigert and Al on looking at uncertainty relations involving three quantities. Yes. And that that's I think it's 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 the volume. Yes, and then you get a minimal volume. Yeah. That's very much unexplored, especially for this uh, more complicated algebras. Yes, of course. The the problem is uh, uh, solving the analytical, having the uh, solving analytical this uh, uh, single equation is very complicated. That is the problem. So to, to deal with uh, yeah, it's very complicated. Very complicated. Mm, yeah.
So for the moment, I have not yet to complete mm. for the yeah. only oscillator. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry, 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 I interrupted in the middle. Uh, Latevi, sorry. Yes. Uh, after we finish, I wanted to ask Andrea something. Oh, okay, you can do. Well, ask, ask, ask it first to Latevi, he's the speaker. <laughs> okay. Uh, what you mentioned about three uh, variable uh, uncertainty, does it have to do with Nambu brackets or something of that sort? Please come again. Mm, not necessarily. I mean, it's the same uh, as the standard uncertainty relation. Yeah, you 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 want to optimize. So in the in the standard relation, you compare the measurement of two quantities. Right. Yeah? But it seems to me it's natural when you have a three-dimensional <laughs> space and you have a non-commutativity here, um, usually you don't have it, but in this case you have it, I want to know the space-time point. I want, to I want to measure X, Y, and P. Yes. And then I want to measure the uncertainty in finding that point, no? Yes. So it seems natural to have, uh, have uh, to extend this to three dimensions. Okay, so so you have three variables which do not commute. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay, in that sense. Okay, thank in, you. In that sense, in that sense. And you want to measure them. Yeah, yeah I understand. Okay, thank you. Um, can I ask another general question? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, standard canonical quantization replaces Poisson brackets by commutators. Now that would give you that X mu with X nu would be zero. So is there some kind of generalized Poisson brackets involving classical X mu and X nu, which would be non-zero? That yes. way you quantize it, you would recover the quantum mechanical Dirac, Dirac brackets, for example, for the Landau problem, the classical Landau problem, use Dirac brackets. X and Y will not uh, commute under Poisson brackets. Okay, so uh, so you're you're saying yes, there is, uh, but yes. then if if the if if classically x mu with x nu is non-zero, it's equal to something with dimension of length squared, yes. but that length squared cannot be the Planck length because oh. you're in you're in classical physics. Oh, but that's the uh, magnetic length. It's it's uh, proportional to inverse b, inverse the. Oh, you mean you mean it does not occur in the absence of a magnetic field. Yeah, the, I said the Lando problem. The, no, no, the, no, but that, okay. That, but what I meant was, is there any, you, you've given me one example, but that one had a magnetic field. Is there any example without a magnetic field? Mm, not that I know of, but it doesn't mean it, that there isn't. But well, I, it, see, the problem is that it have to be some classical fundamental length. Well, it's the, it's the theta variable. Uh, where does it come from? I don't know. You can, you can have a classical analog of the theta. Uh, uh, no, I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind. I mean, the, but there, see, is no, there is no the, experimental uh, evidence for its existence. Well, no, there's no experimental for a quantum mechanical either. But I mean, but the question I'm raising is discussions of quantum, of quantizing gravity within the framework of things like string theory assume the existence of a Planck scale, which is, which is intrinsically quantum mechanical. Could there be some antecedent of that where there is some scale in classical physics prior to quantization? That, that, that's all I'm asking. Well, you're or, asking. or is it one of, the, one of these aspects of quantum mechanics that has no classical analog? No, you are asking if I can make a length scale out of C and uh, Newton's G and without H bar, is that, is that your question? Not necessarily. It doesn't have to have anything to do with, with Newton's G. I mean, I'm just asking, are, are, there, are there intrinsic length scales in, in, classic, in classical physics that would lead to a generalized Poisson bracket between X mu and X nu that was non-zero and was specified by that scale? And you've given me one answer. You said yes. You can have a magnetic field, um, and I was just curious to know whether there were, might be something more general. Not unless unless you put it by hand and call that parameter class. Well, I, I don't mind. I, I mean, since people put the point yeah, by I hand anyway, I, I don't see why I should. Classicalize, classicalize, 
uh, those non-commutative uh, uh, quantum mechanical works and instead of commutators just use Poisson brackets then theta is some classical parameter god knows where it coming from anyway that, that was, i was just curious to know if anyone had, anyone had looked at that that's all i don't think so but i'm not an expert maybe andreas uh, or latevi should know better yeah i'm not sure okay no, but once you mentioned uh, uh, that this uh, non-commutativity uh, classically can uh, be uh, imposed by Dirac brackets in, in yes. instead of Poisson brackets, so Dirac brackets it means you have some additional constraint, and yeah, in yeah. this constraint system you may have three parameters which will imply this actually the scaling. Yes, yes. Sure, uh, sure, 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 sure. Yes, uh, is, yeah, sure. Is uh, one of uh, the two used in the loop quantum gravity because yeah exactly loop, yes loop quantum gravity also uh, predict this scale predicts uh, minimal length so in, in this scenario we proceed by the Dirac bracket by putting constraints yes ex exactly yes so so the constraints so the Dirac uh, bracket is a generalization of the Poisson bracket and yeah, so, 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 yeah, so the scale comes in the constraint Mm, yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yes, that's very good. Proceeding by this, we, we get to a minimal scale, like a loop of the gravity. More questions, comments? Then um, let's uh, thank Latevi again. Thank you very much, Latevi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.